Let's now get started with actually utilizing VCF in Visio. So let's go directly to Visio. We're here now and we want to show the elements which we want to show connections between. So we draw a rectangle to represent our element. First element will be switch A. Let's also show some info. Don't forget to put the star in the shape to then actually fill it in with the name of the element. Draw the other shape. So you can just do that by selecting the shape, holding control and dragging. So that's an easy way to duplicating a element shape. That's our switch B. And if we now look in data miner cube, we will see, all right, we have our two shapes representing the elements drawn. But we don't have any connection between them yet. So to do that, we will draw another shape, put in the shape data connection with the value connectivity. Let's maybe show that this is our connection shape. And good thing to know is that the color of the line between the two shapes representing the DCF connection will take over the style of this shape. So the line style would now be black. If I would show this, you see got a black line. But if I would modify this to, for instance, purple, you would see you now have a purple line between the two shapes. By default, if we don't define any other properties to our connection shape, the line between our elements will be drawn as one single line, even if there are multiple connections between them. This can be shown here, so one single line. But if we would check the properties, we can see that between our two elements, so element A and B, there are multiple connections defined. To modify that, we can go into our visual drawing. We have our connection shape, and there we add a attribute called multiple lines mode. We apply, and we can see we now have our connections defined. Currently, they are drawn as straight lines. You also have the option to draw them as curved lines. Then instead of multiple lines mode, you then have the multiple curved line mode. And now you can slightly see they are a bit curved. If you find that the lines are too densely together, this can be modified. To do that, you go again to Physio and then add an additional attribute called line distance and then define the distance you want between them. Now you can see there's more distance between the different lines. By default, the distance between the lines will be five times the width of the line itself. The distance that we now define is also expressed in X amount of times the width of our line. In the current example, the connection line just goes to the center of the element shape, but it can also go to an interface. To draw an interface, it goes as followed. I've made a new page. I will create the shape for the element info. Don't forget the star. And let's draw the shape for the actual interface. For the value of the interface, you can use the name of the element, a wildcard expression for it, or the ID of the interface. Let's now group these two together and link it to the element we want. So 
Let's do the same for switch B. And let's see what this will do in cube. All right. Now you can see the connection goes between the actual interfaces. Just to prove it's actually doing that, we can move the interface around and can see that the connection line also will follow. You can also draw multiple interfaces. So if I would add an additional interface, let's go into my group. Let's copy that one and let's use Ethernet 2. Let's do the same here. Let's move that one here and copy it and call it Ethernet 2. Let's save. And I can see we now have two connections, one going through Ethernet 1 and the other one for Ethernet 2.